who are supporting us today and who are praying for us. I want to speak to you today on the, the words of the prophet Isaiah that were written almost 3,000 years ago, and yet the message of the gospel has not changed, because the need of man is still the same. And our need is the salvation of God, the salvation that only God can give. And therefore, if I was to entitle the message that I want to bring to you today, it's this. That the problem in this world, the problem is not on God's side. The problem is not with God. The problem is in us. The need is in us. We are the ones who have gone astray. And therefore, the prophet Isaiah puts it in these words, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. Neither is, is his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Dear friends, all of us have the same need. We are not here today because we think we are any better than anyone else. For the Apostle Paul tells us that there is no difference. For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So we come to you today in weakness. To use the words of the Apostle Paul in fear. The fear of God, not the fear of man. And in much trembling because we know our own sins and we know our need for the mercy of God. But we come to you today with a great message, with the everlasting message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That God is able to save. God is able to save us from our sins. And it's not God's lack of ability that results in the salvation of so few. It is the unwillingness of man. We don't want God. And we've made a decision that God is not to be Lord of our lives. And therefore, as the prophet says, our sins and our iniquities have hid his face from us. Dear friends, it's not because the gospel is so complicated. The gospel is probably the most simple message of all time. And the gospel simply is that God is holy. God is righteous. And we have departed from God. We have walked away from God. We have rebelled from the law of God. And we have set ourselves upon the throne. And we are stating that we are in control of our own lives. The Bible calls us in that state rebels in the face of God. Rebels before God who will not have this one to reign over us. Dear friends, the message of the gospel is simply this, two words, repentance and faith. The Bible says that God commands, commanded all men everywhere to repent. And therefore the apostle puts it this way, repentance towards God, a turning away from deciding our own rules, deciding our own rights and wrongs, and a turning to God and recognizing that God is the only one who has the right 
and the authority to establish what right and wrong is. Repentance toward God. And then the second word is faith. Repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, we need to trust that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. That he is not a deceiver, as the devil would whisper into your ear. There's a choice. Either Jesus Christ lived the truth, spoke the truth, died because of the truth, and rose again from the dead to vindicate the truth, we must make a decision. Either that is true, either he is true, or he was a liar. And that's the decision we all must make. And dear friends, that decision will determine your and my eternal destiny. Your response to Jesus Christ will determine whether you spend eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. That is the clarity and the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was raised in the Roman Catholic religion and I was given a lot of complicated rules and regulations and never at any point in the Roman Catholic religion was I told the simple gospel, the unvarnished gospel of Jesus Christ. And therefore I was left, and if we had time to read in the rest of Isaiah 59, it describes those who have walked away from God, those who have turned their back on God as groping in the darkness, reaching for the wall like a blind man. Dear friends, when we don't know Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are blind. We are groping around in the darkness. We are lost in our sin. Dear friend, the problem is not with God. God has not changed. God has not moved. God has remained the same since he created this world. Dear friends, the problem, the need lies in our hearts. We must repent. We must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We must trust Him. Dear friends, the, the Word of God tells us that only a few will believe. The Bible predicted that thousands of years ago. It will only be the few. And even in history, even when this island was dominated by those who professed Christ and those who went to church every Sunday, even then, it was only the minority, it was only the few who were the true believers. So therefore, friends, we are not seeking that you become and just live a different lifestyle. We want you to know the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we are proud today. We are proud. We are proud of Christ. We are proud of the cross of Calvary. We are proud of our King, of the Lord Jesus, the one who is worth having pride in, the one who is worth glorying in, the only one that is worthy of our praise and adoration and worship is the sovereign King of Kings and Lord of Lords. For he is the one that God has determined shall be the judge of the living and the dead. He is the one that God has established on the throne of eternity. He is the one who has conquered the grave, conquered the devil, conquered sin, conquered death, and therefore believing and trusting in Jesus Christ we are made, listen to what Paul says in Romans 8, we are made more than conquerors through him who loved us. Dear friends, the only side of victory is for those who stand with Jesus Christ, those who proclaim him, because the Lord Jesus said that the ones 
who proclaim and confess me before men, I will confess before my Father which is in heaven. Dear friends, there's one thing we can't avoid. There is one thing we can't avoid, and that is the day of judgment. You see, you know in your heart there's a day of judgment. I don't need to convince you of that. And you can argue with me, but your conscience knows. Your heart knows that one day you will stand before God and give an account for your life. You know that. Your conscience convinces you of that. And therefore the message that we preach is a message that you know is true. And yet what you're trying to do even this day is to block out the reality of God. Block out the reality of sin, of judgment, of death. On a nice sunny day, it might be slightly easier to do that. But you know, in the dark nights, I watched a YouTube video yesterday of a, a woman that's lived quite an ungodly life. And I won't mention her name, but in this 10 minute video, she is at the end of herself. She's a millionaire. She's a multi-millionaire. But she's alone in a hotel room with nothing, no friends, no peace, no joy. And the gospel of Jesus Christ gives us something that no money, no parade, no deception can give us. And that is the peace of God that passes all understanding. So friends, I speak to you as one who is no different. I'm a sinner just as you are. In myself, I am condemned as a sinner. But in Christ Jesus, I have been accepted because of Jesus Christ, His righteousness, His life, His death, His merits. God accepts me as if I had lived the life that Jesus lived. Dear friends, that is the wonderful news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not here to be against something. We are here to bring the greatest message that this world has ever known, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the message of salvation, the wonderful, glorious, saving power of Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the one who deserves all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Amen.